Hello everyone. Today is Holi, the festival of colors to those who are celebrating happy Holi. Aap sabko Holi ki shubh kamnaye. Good morning. On behalf of my Mississauga colleagues, Minister Nina Tangri, MPP Natalia Kusunova Basta, thank you to the residents of Mississauga. As a united voice, we are here to serve and we are forever indebted. It's time to welcome Minister Prabhmit Sarkaria and Minister Peter Bethan Falvi, the champions for building Ontario. Since forming the government, we have been making the historic investments in infrastructure and services. Since 2018, the revenue for Ontario has increased without raising any taxes or fees while providing real relief to Ontarians. It is always a pleasure to welcome the champion of champions, Premier Doug Ford, to Mississauga. Without further ado, please join me in welcoming the Minister of Finance to podium. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you, and PPNN. I'm thrilled to be here in Mississauga again with my colleagues uh, from Mississauga and, uh, of course, uh, Minister Sarkari. And I'm really pleased to join Premier Ford and all of you this morning. You know, our government really knows that high inflation and high interest rates are putting immense pressure on the pocketbooks of Ontarians. Families are feeling the strain on their household budgets, and our government understands that. That's why we acted early to keep costs down and protect people and businesses from the rising cost of everything. And thanks to our government's efforts to date, we have put more money back into the pockets of families, seniors, businesses, workers, drivers, transit riders, and many of the great workers here in this facility, many of them who are here today. And we're doing this right across the province for all Ontarians. Now, I've got the privilege tomorrow to release the province's 2024 budget, which will build on our plan to keep costs down and grow Ontario's economy, rebuild it and grow it, and support our workers and all its hard-working uh, people. This update will continue with our government's very prudent and responsible plan and very targeted to manage the province's finances. It's going to help us stay the course while creating stronger communities, not just for today, but for tomorrow as well. And it'll help build a better Ontario for the 16 million plus people in this great province. Now I have the distinct honor and privilege, and I get to do this a few times and it never gets old, to introduce the Premier of Ontario, Doug Ford. Well, good morning, everyone. I'm thrilled to be back here in beautiful city of Mississauga alongside Minister Bethan Falvey that's going to deliver a fantastic budget tomorrow, Minister Sarkaria, Minister Tangri, and MPPs Deepak Anon, and Natalia Kusandova. And a big thank you to everyone here at MCON Services for hosting us today. You know, you wonder what they do, folks, when the snow's hitting the ground, they're out cleaning it around the clock, and I'm just very grateful for uh, the people that do that uh, day in and day out for us. Keep our roads safe. Friends, one week from today, on April the 1st, the federal government will be raising its terrible carbon tax by a staggering 23%. This increase is going to raise the price at the pumps by an additional three cents per liter of gas. Starting next week, the total cost of the federal carbon tax will be 17.6 cents per liter of gas, increasing everything that moves. This tax is costing hardworking people more money to drive to work or drop off the kids to hockey practice. It's going to increase the cost of everything. It's going to hurt every single person in Ontario. So once again, I'm calling on the federal government to not make life more expensive for Ontario families. I urge you to immediately scrap next week's tax hike. And it's not too late. And friends, don't be fooled. Bonnie Crombie continues to support carbon taxes and this tax increase. The queen of the carbon tax won't speak out against next week's tax hike. In fact, her committee, the one she handpicked to study carbon taxes, 
every single one of them is on record supporting a carbon tax. They aren't fooling anyone. Unlike Bonnie and the Liberals, our government will never support a carbon tax. In fact, our government has never raised a tax on people or businesses. Instead, we're cutting taxes. We're keeping costs down. In 2022, we introduced a temporary gas tax cut by more than 10.7 cents per liter, saving households $260 over the last two years. A report came out just last week noting this tax cut has saved taxpayers over $2.1 billion. This is one of the largest tax cuts in Ontario's history. And today, I'm pleased to announce that in our upcoming budget, we're going to extend the gas tax cut through to December 31st, 2024. This, <laughs> absolutely. This measure will ensure that the rate cut remains at 10.7 cents per liter until the end of the year, saving households an average of $320 over two and a half years since the tax cut was first introduced. It's never been more important to keep costs down, especially now, as people struggle with the Bank of Canada's interest rate hikes and the rising cost of the federal carbon tax. We're on a relentless mission to save people money. We eliminated roll tolls. We scrapped the license plate sticker fee. We launched one fare to eliminate the cost of transferring between transit agencies in the GTA. We're fighting back against the carbon tax and we're cutting the gas tax. Together, these actions are saving Ontario households thousands of dollars every year. Our government will always, always look for ways to put money back into your pockets. Thank everyone for joining us today and may God bless the people of Ontario. Thank you. We'll now go to reporters' questions. If reporters could please line up with the microphone behind me, identify yourselves by name and outlet. It'll be one question and one follow-up. Hi, Premier Jack Howen from the Trillium. Hi, Jack. Uh, just wondering if you uh, plan to vote for your deputy leader's bill introduced by the NDP to ban uh, taxpayer-funded ads. Well, you know something? We have to get out there, and every single person in Ontario, and especially since we have such a multicultural uh, uh, province, they're out there promoting Ontario to their friends, their relatives, their business partners around the world. And we're going to make sure that the world knows that Ontario is open for business. Those uh, ads are very productive. They're around the world. You go to LAX, you go over to Germany, you go anywhere, and you'll see those ads. That's what people do. They promote their province to attract more businesses. And that's the reason we've attracted over $28 billion in, in the EV sector, in the auto sector, tens of billions of dollars in the tech sector, and over $3 billion in life sciences. And that's the reason last year Manufacturers in Ontario created more jobs than all 50 U.S. states combined. You have to market your province, and that's exactly what we're doing. Thank you. And uh, during the pandemic, you instituted uh, tougher penalties against price gouging. Uh, you railed against it often. At one point, do you think uh, the actions of Loblaw and other big grocers who are making hundreds of millions of dollars in profits uh, while Ontarians struggle with high food prices constitute price gouging and do you plan to do anything about that in the budget? Well, one of the reasons price is going up right across the board is the carbon tax. Everything gets uh, transported on a truck, on a train, on a plane, and we're asking the, the federal government to get rid of this tax. You notice out in Saskatchewan, I saw my uh, friend Scott Moe, and uh, inflation actually dropped further in Saskatchewan when he said he's not paying the the carbon tax and I'm getting calls constantly about why are you paying the carbon tax well in Saskatchewan uh, the government owns the uh, utility companies and and we don't so um, it's dropped down to uh, I believe 1.9% uh, 9, uh, 9 from so that's that's pretty good 1.8 1.9% compared to here it's 2.8% inflation so inflation has dropped in Saskatchewan because of the carbon tax. It's a terrible tax. Everyone knows it. Everywhere I go, uh, they, they know they're getting gouged. And when they go to the gas pumps, 
uh, they're getting gouged. Just think, 17, almost 17 and a half cents of every liter that goes into your car is going to the federal government. Hi, Premier Mike Crawley from CBC. Uh, what is going to be in the budget tomorrow uh, in relation to auto insurance? Well, before I pass it to the finance minister, uh, we have to continue, continue building the economy. Things are tough out there for people, really, really tough. They're feeling the crunch no matter if it's increasing gas prices or uh, trying to get a deposit or down payment for a home with these interest rates from the Bank of Canada, uh, buying uh, groceries right across the, the board. Uh, so our number one goal is keep the economy going, but most importantly, making sure we never raise the tax and put money back into people's pockets. You know, I'm so fortunate to have one of the best finance ministers I've ever I've worked with and what I've ever seen in Ontario. He's been working his back off around the clock. He's going to deliver an incredible uh, budget tomorrow, and I just can't wait. Yeah, th thank you, Premier. Uh, thank you, Mike, for the question. You know, we're always working uh, on uh, making uh, things more convenient and providing more choice. Uh, for auto uh, drivers, uh, people drivers, uh, but I, you won't be surprised. I'm not going to reveal what's in tomorrow's budget. But what I would say is this: you know, there's many components to auto insurance. One, not least of which, is auto theft, and uh, we've been very working very and funding um, auto theft initiatives, supporting our our police forces right across Ontario. We put a lot more money into guns and gangs. And the other thing that would really help, of course, is. Uh, you know the ports in Montreal and beyond. Uh, so we got to work together, uh, and uh, of course we'll have more to say in the budget tomorrow. I would also say this: you know, it's not just about uh, helping people with the cost of uh, car insurance, but it's also supporting drivers. You know, we've taken the license plate stickers off. We've obviously today continued the gas tax cut, which is not just for drivers, but the whole supply chain. You know, people who use fuel to get goods to market, food to the grocery stores. So. It's, this is a big thing today, as the Premier said, putting more money in people's pockets. This is going to be now $320 in people's pockets since the, the day we announced the first, uh, first uh, extension of a gas tax cut back in 2022. Thank you. Uh, Premier, back to the uh, advertising again. Whenever you're asked a question about these ads, you talk about the ads that are running outside of Ontario to attract business here. That makes sense. What people are actually wondering about is why are you running ads using taxpayer money in Ontario telling people, hey, in Ontario, we're building highways, we're, you know, there's, there's investments happening. Why, yeah. you, and you actually promised in your first election campaign to stop spending taxpayer money well, on ads promoting Ontario. So why did you break that promise? Well, that's your, your point, Mike, and we disagree like usual, but here nor there. Um, what I did say in the first question you asked me, uh, we live in a province that there's over 16 million people. People from all over the world, over 120 countries, uh, speaking over 200 languages, uh, they own businesses. They have friends around the world. And they're our salespeople. They're out there promoting Ontario. And when I was out uh, for, for the last year or two, people are saying, you got to tell us what you're doing. You're doing such great things. So we're telling the 16 million people of Ontario, you have a business down in the U.S. or somewhere else around the world. Come and invest in Ontario. It's the greatest jurisdiction in the entire world to open a business, to raise a family, to you know, uh, have a family and, and uh, call Ontario roots. This is the last reporter. Yeah. Morning, Premier. Al Sweeney from CHCH News. So I know you can't talk about the specifics of tomorrow's budget, but can you give us an idea at the end of the day tomorrow what the impact is going to be on the average person, say? Well, again, let's wait till tomorrow. I think the finance minister is going to deliver an incredible budget. Uh, what we can tell you is we aren't going to raise taxes. We're always going to make sure that we put money into people's pockets rather than the government's pockets. You know, some, some people like Bonnie Crombie think that she knows best. She knows that, you know, taxing people is good. Meanwhile, Mississauga, under her watch, actually shrunk when we have a population boom, a housing boom. I don't believe that. I believe the people know best. They know how to spend their money, not the government and they're going to be able to do things they might otherwise not be able to do. As simple as going out for dinner, 
maybe going and buying a piece of furniture, maybe putting a little uh, renovation on with, within their home. Uh, that's what we believe in. That's what stirs the economy. But make no mistake about it, uh, Ontario is an economic powerhouse around the world. People are talking about Ontario, no matter if it's the Consul Generals or, or ambassadors that I meet with or governors that I meet with. Uh, we're going in the right direction. We're going to see massive investment this year. I predict we will set a record for investment. There'll be tens of billions of dollars from around the world coming here to invest in Ontario, in the people, in the technology, in the ingenuity. Uh, that's what we believe in, and uh, we're, we're really uh, moving forward on the economy. But the key thing, people are finding it tough right now, and we're going to do everything we can to put more money into people's pockets. So thank you, everyone, and God bless. Thank you. Can I, can I get a supplemental in here? Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, sorry. Sorry, I was um, cutting you off short. I wonder if I could get a clarification of your remarks the last week about fourplexes. Yep. When you, you don't want four-story buildings. That's right. But what about um, a two-story building with two units beside each other, which, which is regarded as a fourplex, well, right? Well, well, first of all, I, I believe in, in letting municipalities decide. You know, again, Bonnie Crombie thinks she knows better than all 444 municipalities. I don't. Um, and it's as of right. Just imagine if your neighbor sold their house, they tore it down, and put a four, six-story tower beside you. No, that, that's not going to fly. I've been, I've been in politics long enough. You go deep into the communities, and all of a sudden you have these four-story buildings beside you. If you have an existing home, but this is going to be up to the municipalities, and you want to, in the existing structure, put a nanny suite in the basement, a couple other uh, places you want to rent out, well, God bless you. But uh, we aren't going to have, as of right, forcing people. That's the magical word. Bonnie Crombie would force people uh, to put up with a four-story tower beside your home. I don't believe in forcing people. What, what uh, about a two-story building with four units in it? No, I, again, an existing building, so an existing home. You can have a nanny suite, but what we aren't going to do is force people to uh, put up with the, your neighbors selling their house, and all of a sudden a four-story building goes up. That's unacceptable. And, but the, the municipalities, uh, we're going to work with them. They know best. Uh, they're the ones in their communities, and we look forward to working with them. Thanks so much. Thank you. Take care.